the latest version of chat gpt is out and let's be honest a lot of people are underwhelmed you may be hearing that answers feel lazy generic or plain worse than before and you may not be wrong because there is a research which shows that 90% of ai chatbot response on certain topics have a lot of inaccuracies but what if i told you that model is in the problem it's in how you are using it. Recent studies shows that for exact same model, just changing the phrase of prompt can swing its performance by over 45%. That's the difference between genius and junk. And it's all in the prompt. And it's not just a party trick. Prompt engineering is actually a billion dollar market. And a lot of companies in the US are paying the salary of 375K or more for people who can get the right results out of these tools. And here's the issue. People are prompting the new models the same way that they were prompting the old models. But there is a fundamental difference in how they work. The thing is, before GPT-5, OpenAI had too many models to choose from. Like, like 4.1 was their classic and best model, but it was not a reasoning model. So it couldn't reason on its own response and act to improve its answer. For that, they had a different model, which was O3, where you can also adjust different reasoning efforts and whatnot. And then for smaller tasks, obviously you had 4.1 mini. But these new models are built different. Instead of thinking of them like an all-knowing brain, think of them like a router, because that's what's happening behind the scenes. So when you give it a lazy one-liner prompt, it routes it to the laziest and dumbest part of the system. It's also hyper-literal. So what does it mean? That means it's not very good at making assumptions and it sticks to exactly what you say. In this video, I'm going to share with you the five most critical methods that you can use to get the most out of your latest LLM models. And trust me, the results will be so good afterwards that you'll probably think it's just coming from a different AI model altogether. Hi everyone, I'm Josh and why should you take my word for it? Because I'm somebody who has been using a lot of models in my professional life in day-to-day -day basis because I'm a senior software engineer specifically in AI field within DoorDash and I was an AI engineer at Google as well and I have over six plus years of experience in data and AI field. First technique is forcing deeper reasoning. The biggest mistake that people make is they don't tell AI how to think. You can't just ask a complex question and assume that AI will now go through all the complex reasoning paths to answer that question. So don't just say explain quantum computing. Instead, add a nudge phrase either in the beginning or at the end. One example can be, think about this step by step. Think deeply about the implications of what you're mentioning. Or maybe uh, act like you are a senior renowned physicist that knows a lot about quantum computing. Just by telling the model to assume the role of uh, a renowned physicist, you're not feeding the ego of the model and that's why the model is doing better, that's not how it works. But by adding that one line in your prompt, you're routing it to more advanced reasoning parts of the model. And the difference can be night and day. Now, if you have OpenAI's prompt playground, then you have the ability to configure different levers of reasoning models, like do you want to have high, medium, low or minimal reasoning? But when you're interacting with a normal chat GPT, you don't have all those options. That means you're stuck with prompt engineering itself. Another option that you can configure in this playground, um, if you would have seen, is verbosity, which defines how long the model's answer should be. And that brings me to my next point. The new models are terrible at guessing how long of an answer do you want. So you have to explicitly say the verbosity and the format of the response. Don't just say, write a marketing email for my new product. Instead, be hyper-specific, like write a low verbosity market email under 150 words. Create a high verbosity project brief. It must include a detailed breakdown, an executive summary, and a list of stakeholders. Aim for 800 to 1000 words. Give me a medium verbosity answer, formatted as five clear bullet points. So by controlling these variables, you avoid the generic AI slop kind of an answer and you get exactly what you have in your brain from an AI. Number three is use an official optimizer. So the thing is, OpenAI has their own official optimizer, but it's kind of hidden within their developer platform. For example, let's say you want to build an app like Google Calendar. So you would write a lazy one-liner prompt like, you have to build an app like Google Calendar, write entire code base, unit tests, show me architecture diagrams. And the optimizer will take that and craft a detailed, structured, powerful prompt that the AI will actually understand, asking for the tech stack, the key features, data models, and more. Now, you don't want to pay a lot for platform access. Don't worry, there is a trick that you can use to get a very similar response from your normal LLM model. Just create a new chat, and in this chat, let the LLM assume the role of a, an expert prompt engineer. And then you should share the official prompting guide. 
This is the same guide that even the prompt optimizer uses in the backend. And look, I get it. This is a completely new way of thinking about AI and these techniques are, to be honest, they are just the beginning. All right, now we are venturing into advanced techniques. And number one in that is make the AI grade its own responses. It's like a really good rubric and this technique is my favorite. It sounds crazy, but it works and you are kind of forcing the AI to self-reflect before it gives you a response. Let me give you an example. This is a prompt that you can actually copy. I want you to, you can just specify your task here, but first I want you to spend time thinking and create a rubric for what a world-class response to this task would look like. The rubric should have five to seven categories. Do not show me the rubric, but finally use that rubric internally to iterate and write the best possible solution, ensuring your response scores 10 on 10 across all categories. You are literally forcing AI to define what excellence is and then telling it to stick to that standard. In fact, you can also use a different LLM model as an evaluator after your response is generated. And if it doesn't meet your standard, then you can prompt your LLM again. This way, there is no bias involved because the model answering the question is not the one evaluating it. Next technique is called meta prompting. So a lot of times like it happens, right? When you are deep into your conversation and things are going well, and then you ask for next task and AI completely messes it up. And what do you do? You kind of move on, create a new chat session because now the context and everything is completely messed up. So you want to start afresh. Instead of doing this, you should do meta prompting. I would like you to try this. The last response wasn't what I wanted. Desired behavior, I want you to, here you explain exactly what you wanted. Like let's say, give me three distinct creative concepts. Undesired behavior, instead you gave me one generic idea. How would you rewrite my original prompt to get to the desired behavior? Now ChatGPT will write the new prompt itself and trust me, it knows itself better than you do. So when you get that prompt, that's the prompt that you should copy and go to the new window instead of losing all of your context and work. So there you have it. Uh, new models are really good. It's not just about ChatGPT. Even Claude has Sonnet 4.5. They have 4.1 Opus, which uh, a lot of people use a lot for coding. ChatGPT also launched recently 5 Pro instead of 5. But all of these techniques that I just mentioned apply to all these latest reasoning models. So let's do a recap. Number one, force deeper reasoning with nudge phrases. Control the variables like verbosity and format. Use the prompt optimizer or go for the free workaround. Make it grade itself with a rubric method or use meta prompting to fix your bad prompts. Thanks for watching. If you found it useful, don't forget to leave it a like and mention in the comment that which technique are you looking forward to using the most or if you're already using one of them or if you have any new techniques that you want to share with the rest of us, feel free to do it. Subscribe for more. That's about it. See you next time.